Hey guys, welcome back to another Imagine 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use a locked door. So in this, the door will be locked by default, so you won't be able to open it. You pick up a key, once you picked it up, you're going to be able to open the door again. So this is something which is quite commonly used in horror games and other stuff like that. So essentially, you can't open the door, you pick up a key, and then you can. So let me show you what this is going to look like now. So I go in, I try to open the door, we can't open it, and you get that sound effect there to signify that the door is locked. And then when we pick up this key here, we have a sound effect for picking it up, and then we can open this door like so. So this is what we're going to be making today, and it's quite a nice little concept, and it works really well. So let me delete this code, and I'll show you how I've done this. So the first step we want to make is we want to obviously import these models. So I've got a key model and two sound effects, and I'll be leaving a link to these in the description down below. So we've got the key pickup, the key model, but it's very small, so you probably won't be able to see it in here. Nope, we'll need to open it up later on, so I'll show you that when we use it. And then the locked door, like so. And so after this, we want to open up our character blueprint. So for me, this is the third person character. So that's content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character. But for you, this could be third, first, or whatever you've named it. And all we want to do in here is we just want to create a variable. So in the bottom left down here, we're going to hit the plus variable there. And I'm just going to call this has key, question mark like that, compile, leaving it as a boolean there and leaving the default value as false. And that is all we need to do in here. So we can close that straight away. And we're just going to be using that to tell the player in the code whether or not we have picked up the key or not. So once you've done that, we're going to go back to our folder where we're making the door and the key. So for me, that's just simply content and locked door. But this can be anywhere that you want it. In here, we're going to make the door first. So we're going to right click, go to blueprint class, get an actor. And I'm going to simply call this one locked door BP. But you can name this whatever you like. And I'm going to open that up straight away. In here, we're going to add a component. I'm going to add a static mesh like so. And this is just going to be the door. And I'm going to be using the door static mesh in the start content, which is SM door there, like so. And then one other thing we want to add in the viewport, is we'll deselect that, add a component, and just want to add a box collision. And this box collision is where the player has to be in order to open the door. So I'm just going to put that in the middle and scale this up a bit. So again, once the player is in this area, they can open and close the door. So get this to be as big or as small as you want. But I think that is a good size for me. Once we've done that, we're going to compile and go straight over to the event graph, and we can delete these three nodes here. What we want to do in here is we want to right click on our box collision in the top left, add event, add on component begin overlap, right click it again, add event, add on component end overlap. And so this is what's going to be telling us whether or not the player is inside or outside of this box collision. And to see if it's the player, what we want to do is out of other actor, we're going to cast to our character. For me, that is the third person character, like so. And you're going to do that on both of the other actors for each event. So again, this for you, this could be third, first, or whatever you've named it. After this, we also want to right click and get player controller, like that. Just putting that in between those two there. We're going to right click again. We're going to get enable input. Target is self, player controller is the return value there. Plugging that into the top cast off of the begin overlap. We're going to right click, we're going to get disable input, like so. Plugging that into the bottom cast. Of the end overlap, again, target itself, player controller as get player controller. And what this is doing is this is allowing us to use the E key or whatever key you want to actually be able to open the door. If we don't enable the input, we won't be able to open the door. And we're disabling it so that whenever we press E, even if we're not close enough, it isn't firing off this code to try and open the door, so it just makes it more effective. And it can also stop other things from breaking later on as well. So then what we want to do above this is actually press E. So we could just get an E keyboard event. But to make this slightly more efficient, we're going to go to Edit, Project Settings. Once this loads, we're going to go down to Input in the bottom left here, and we're going to create an action mapping. Now you see I already have it, that's just from previous tutorials, so what you're going to want to do is hit the plus action mapping there, name this whatever you like, so I've named mine Interact, and you can change this from None to the E key, or the F key, or left mouse button, literally any button you want. This is just a button the player will press to interact. Once you've done that, you can just close that straight away, right click, and search for it, so I named mine interact. You can see we have interact action event there. So now we have input action interact. So whenever the player presses that button, this will fire off. Off of pressed, so when the player presses the button, we're gonna hold down B, left click to get a branch like that, plugging that in there. The condition of this is we want to see if the player has the key. So to figure that out, we're gonna come off of as third person character for this cast here, and we're going to get has key, that Boolean we made earlier. Put that above there, and plug that into the condition of the branch, like so. So what we're going to do is, if the player is close enough to the door, 
and they press E and they have the key, then we're going to open the door, which we'll do here. So if that's true, we're going to go into a gate. So hold down G and left click to get a gate with the enter going into true there. The open, we're going to enable input, the close, we're going to disable input. So again, if we are close enough to the door and we have the key and we press E, then we'll come out the exit and open the door. So this just basically links these together to make sure that everything is correct and how we want it. Out of the exit of this, we're going to get a flip-flop, which just toggles between two different values of A and B. And this is how we're going to be opening and closing our door. So we're going to come out of A and we're going to add a timeline, like so. I'm just going to name this open slash close door, like so. And we're going to make sure that that is going into the play. The B will go into reverse, because if we're playing it, it's going to open. If we're reversing it, we're going to close it because we're just going to be playing the open animation backwards, which is how you close it. It's just the complete opposite. It's just reversing it. So now let's set up that animation. So let's double click this timeline to open it up. The length in here, you're going to want to set to how long you want the door to take to open. So I want it to take two seconds. So I'll set the length to two. Then we're going to add a float track up here. And I'm just going to name this door track. You can name this absolutely whatever you like. In this graph here, I'm going to right click and add a key to curve float time zero, value also zero, so this is at the very start. I'm going to right click, add another keyframe with time two and value one, so this is now at the very end. I'm going to press these buttons here to zoom to fit horizontal and vertical, and it's just going to simply go from the beginning to the end of the timeline, and therefore opening and closing our door. So this will open, this will close. Then we can just close that timeline like so. Now you can see we have this float track here. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and going to get a lerp float, so just a float lerp there, the alpha going to the door track there, like so. So what this is going to do is it's going to use that value of 0 and 1 as the alpha to go between the values of A and B, which will be opening and closing the door. So let's set up those values of A and B now. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some variables. So if you go back to the viewport here, you can have a look at the values that we want. So our closed angle is going to be how it is now. So you can select it, you can see that on the Z, the rotation is zero. And we're checking the Z because we want to rotate it on the Z like this. So when it's closed, it's going to be zero. So what we can do is we can just hit a plus variable there, call this closed angle, changing this to a float up in the top right up here, compile to change the default value and leave it at zero. I'm going to hit plus variable again, name this one open angle, keeping it as a float, compile to change the default value. And now let's set up what we want that to be. So if we press E to rotate it, and rotate it on the Z, I want it to open there. So that's minus 100 on the Z. So I want it to open all the way to the angle of minus 100. So let's put it back to zero. And in the open angle here, let's change that value to minus 100, like so. Now if we compile, go back to the event graph, we can put these values in this lerp. So A is the start position, which is going to be closed. So we'll put our closed angle there. B is the ending position, which is going to be open. So we'll put our open angle in there, like so. And when we're closing it, it's going to reverse it, so it'll go from open to close. So this will work perfectly like so. So then to actually move the door, all we need to do is simply just drag and drop a reference to our static mesh up here that we have for the door. So you can name that door as well. Drag out of this, and then set relative rotation, like so. Plugging that into the update of the timeline. So every time the timeline updates, it will move the door. We're going to right click the new rotation, split structure pin, plug the return value of this lerp into the Z, as again we are rotating it on the Z. And this will work perfectly, this will now open the door. So I'm going to select all this and hit C to comment it, and I'll do open door if close enough and has key, like so. And then I'll select this, hit C to comment it, and just have open slash close door animation, like so. So now we know exactly what the code does as well, and that is it. So that is the opening and closing the door code done on whether or not we have the key. So now what we need to do is we need to set up the actual key blueprint and being able to pick it up. So we compile, save, we can close this code here as that is all we need to do in there. Although actually there's one thing in here which I've just reminded myself of when I close this. If we open this up, what we're going to do is off of this branch here where we have false, I'm going to play sound at location. I'll put that there, the location, I'll just come at that and get at location. So it plays this at the door, like so. And what we're going to put in here is our locked door sound effect, which we have, like so. So what this is going to do 
It's essentially if the door is locked and we want to open it, it's going to come off a false because we don't have the key. So it will play the sound effect of the door being locked. So the player then knows, oh, this door is locked. I need to find a key somewhere. So now this is it done. We can compile, save, and close that. And that should work perfectly. So we can test that out as well to see if it does work. So if we just place our door on the level where we want it, like so, and what I'm going to do is if we hit play, I'll go up to it, I'll press E, we get that sound effect there, and the door doesn't open because we don't have the key yet, because we haven't even set it up yet. So press E, we get the sound effect, and the door doesn't open. So let's create the key blueprint now. So to do that, it's very simple as well. We're going to right click, blueprint class, get another actor. I'm just going to call this key BP like that, and we'll open it up straight away. In here, we want to do the exact same as the door. We're going to add a component, add a static mesh like so. And we're going to make this one the key model that we have here. And like I say, this is very small by default from the person who made it. So I'm just going to set this up to be 350 on the X, Y, and Z like so. So it's just a little bit bigger, scaled up more like that. And again, that's a value I found good to be earlier. If we deselect that, we add another box collision like so. Again, this is the area the player has to be in in order to pick up the key. So I'm going to make this quite big, so if we have it on a desk or something, the player can be next to the desk and still be able to pick it up. So I think something like that will be good. If we deselect it, you see we have the key there, and this box collision in which the player needs to be inside it in order to pick up the key. So we can compile, go over to the event graph like so, and again, delete these nodes here. This is all going to be very much the same as what we did in the door. So in actual fact, what we can do is because it's basically the same thing, we can just minimize this here open up our door BP and we can just duplicate the code over. So all this is the same. So if we select interact, the begin and end overlap, delete the cast and enable and disable input with the player controller and then also the gate as well. We just select that, hit control C, go over to our key BP and hit control V. We now have this in here like so and this will work perfectly. And the reason we had no errors is because everything had the same name. So the box collision was just called box so it knows what it should be. And then we can just plug the pressed straight into the gate like so. And now we don't need to write the code again because it's the exact same. We can just duplicate it over, except because it's now with this box collision instead, this will work only for this key. So it's not gonna work for the door, it'll work for the key. And the code in the door won't work for the key, it'll work for the door. So they're still very much the own independent pieces of code. We can just copy it over just to save us some time. And now all we need to do out of this is as third person character from the cast again, we're going to, instead of get has key this time, we're going to set has key. Plugging that off the exit there, we're going to set it to true. So now the player does have the key. Off of this, we're going to play sound at location, with the location again just being get actor location like so. And this sound I'm going to have as our key pickup sound effect. So key pickup there. So when the player picks up the key, they have a sound effect to signify it as well. Then after this, all we're going to do is get a destroy actor. What this does is it just destroys the actor, so it deletes it, it removes it from the scene, so the key is now gone, as if the player picked it up. So it just gives that illusion of the player picking it up. And this boolean here is essentially the item being picked up. So now this works perfectly. So if we compile, save this, we should see this working. So if we minimize as well, then place in our key in here, we can just rotate it. Now, this is quite a big box collision, so it's also good to get it in the level, see how big it is. So the key is quite big as well, but what we can do is just go into the viewport and make this a little bit smaller. So instead of maybe 350, I'll just make it 300. And if I minimize this like so, I can see how big the box collision is actually going to be for when I am making it smaller. So I, if I make it smaller like so, I say about there is a good size like that. So now if we compile, save, minimize again, we can now test it. So we hit play to test it, we go in, try to open the door not going to open. We have that sound effect like that as well. We'll go over to the key. We picked it up. We've got the sound effect. It's disappeared. Go back over to the door. The door can now open and we don't get that sound effect anymore because it's no longer locked. So that works perfectly like so. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. We've set it up so we have a locked door by default and it signifies to the player that it's locked with a sound effect. We can go to a key and pick it up again with a sound effect. It disappears, all that good stuff. And we go over to the door and we can now open it perfectly like so. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.